Now the transmission is flipped over and this little part here with the bumps on it, that's where your gear shifter in your car attaches when you change your gears. This little shaft here is your kick down linkage. The whole part and assembly here is called a valve body. This is the brain of your automatic transmission. Inside all these bumps and stuff is just shiny metal rods which are valve pistons. There's one here, one here. You can see some of them in those holes a little bit. So when your transmission makes its decisions on what gear it wants to be in or what it's supposed to do, different pressures and different things move these different valves kind of like an old-fashioned analog computer. The kick down is here. When you step on your gas hard, on your throttle, it moves this arm, which hits this piston, and it changes the range of when your gears shift in your transmission. When, but gears don't actually shift. It's those bands and clutches. When you want to select your different gears in your transmission, like forward, reverse, drive, neutral, all that stuff, this is the lever that does it. That's hooked directly to your shifter arm. And it just moves out this little piston. And it just sends oil to different places in here to put your transmission in the appropriate gear that you've selected. The clicking you feel when you're switching gears is just these bumps riding against a roller spring. You're not actually shifting any gears. You're just smoothly moving a piston by feeling pressure against these bumps to hold it in the right position. This little arm here actuates this thing, which is your park arm I already just showed you. So it either lifts this arm up so it's not in park or lets the arm fall down by spring tension and it catches one of those notches and it is in park. So that little arm does that. In between, of course, the valve body and the housing is just this gasket. Now I explained that these pistons push on these brakes and clamp those collars and stuff. Well, the pistons go in these holes and there's a cap on top. I'll get in a minute. And the cap is held on just by a C-clip and oil flows in on between the cap and it pushes the piston down and that pin clamps one of these brakes. And of course, there's the other one. Well, when fluid flows in there, it can cause the brake to clamp really quickly and make your transmission jerk like it's got a shift kit in it. A hard shift. Well, to make smoother shifts, we have a shift dampening plunger. It's just like a little idler piston. It makes it more gentle so when the fluid flows into one of these pistons to actuate one of these brakes it has this little piston to push against because it's on the same pressurized volume and that just smooths out the fluid pushing on here so it doesn't just hit it so hard and cause a hard shift this this little thing dampens it and moves back for a second to reduce the pressure to cause a smooth gradual shift so it's effortless I mean, it's a seamless shift in your transmission and I guess finally your valve body is sitting there pointing towards the ground on your transmission and that part here is your oil pickup tube and this is the oil filter. Oil comes in here, goes through a thick piece of paper and is always filtered while the transmission is continuously sucking up the fluid. Okay. And as always, a phone call. <laughs> now that I've got this whole thing tore apart on the floor, the disassembly process once I got the front housing off, everything else was just held in there just by a few C-clips. The reason you check your oil on your transmission while it's running 
is because it has to fill up the torque converter to show the right level in your case, you know, in the oil pan. If you have your engine not running, then half of the oil from the torque converter runs into the transmission pan, and then the level goes up. If you have a transmission in your car that's not working at all. Every gear you select, the car doesn't move. It acts like there's no transmission. Well, the first thing you want to check is the fluid level. If it still has fluid in it, check, check it once while it's running and once while it's not running. If the level is the same, then the most common problem that's happened is the pump shaft. That is, this skinny shaft has broken or the teeth have stripped off, so the transmission is not sucking up the oil. This is a common problem for mid-1990s Cavaliers and Sunbirds and stuff like that. If you're accelerating with your automatic transmission car and you're stepping on the gas and the engine's revving up but the car's slipping, it's the transmission's slipping, it's like not going as fast as, the, as you're accelerating, well, then some of these clutch plates are worn out or these brake bands. When they wear out, they discolor your fluid. So it looks like that. It's kind of a brownish color. All that friction material, which is brown friction material, ends up in the oil and makes it cloudy. A, a good healthy transmission has bright red clear oil and it doesn't have a burnt smell. When those clutches are slipping or those brake bands, they always leave a burnt smell. And as you can see, it's pretty murky <laughs> and exactly what you don't want to see in an automatic transmission. And inside the housing is not much, just some notches to hold those outer edges of some of these clutches, thrust bearings, basically just empty space. Now as we all know, Chrysler minivans, especially with the 4-speed automatic transmission, had a problem with all their transmissions going bad too. Well, it wasn't much of a problem with clutch plates. It was a problem with D-rings. That's a big rubber O-ring made out of gray rubber or neoprene that had to do with sealing around the clutches and so that it could have pressure to actuate the clutches. I don't actually have a D-ring with me right now, but they're about that size. There's just a big floppy rubber O-ring like this metal ring. And they're called a D-ring because just like this ring, the inside edge is square but the outside edge was rounded. So if you cut one and split it, the profile would look like a D. That's what would wear out on them. But it's unfortunate that you had to take the transmission out of the car, completely disassemble it like this, just to put one of those D rings in or a couple of them in. Oops, dinner's ready. I hope you learned something, I've gotta go. Oh yeah, one more thing to mention. This being a four-speed automatic overdrive transmission, that means it has a circle around the D on your selector. Overdrive means that the output shaft of the transmission comes out of the back, that goes to your drive shaft, is spinning faster than the input of the transmission, the torque converter, so it's overdriving. On a three-speed automatic transmission, that never happens. On a three-speed automatic, third gear is always, the sha output shaft is spinning at almost the same speed as a torque converter. The reason it's not spinning at the same speed is because torque converters have some slippage, unless you have a lockup torque converter. And then for sure, when you're driving on the highway, the torque converter or the RPM of the motor is the same as the output shaft of the transmission.